High blood sugar levels are considered unhealthy. Chronically elevated blood sugar levels do contribute to many different kinds of diseases like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, neurodegeneration, and even accelerated aging. But there is some critical difference between your fasting blood sugar levels and the postprandial glucose levels, which describes the glucose rise after eating. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the research about the postprandial glucose rise and how you can lower it. Do it! First of all, I have to say that it is very normal for your blood sugar levels to rise after eating. Like when you are eating something even that doesn't have carbohydrates, you would expect your blood sugar levels to rise to a certain extent, even if you eat only protein, or but especially if you're eating some foods that have carbohydrates, that you can expect your blood sugar levels to rise for at least a few hours. The issue is that in diabetes, you're not able to lower that blood sugar levels that much and the blood sugar levels stay chronically elevated for much longer. And the individuals who have a significantly higher blood sugar response and elevation for many hours after eating, those individuals tend to be at a higher risk of developing diabetes and even cardiovascular disease. So it has been shown that postprandial hyperglycemia, as well as hyperlipidemia, which means the elevation in triglycerides, is a cardiovascular disease factor. Collectively, it's called postprandial dysmetabolism. So this uh, rise in blood sugar levels and uh, triglycerides beyond what is normal and the elevation for a longer period of time that is considered normal. That's the issue. And this postprandial dysmetabolism is mediated by oxidative stress, which is directly proportional to the increase in glucose after a meal. So these very large spikes and the chronically elevation of the you know, uh, postprandial hyperglycemia is what uh, causes a lot of these health issues. And this oxygen stress can trigger inflammation, endothelial dysfunction, hypercoagulability, and sympathetic hyperactivity, which is atherogenic, which refers to the development of atherosclerosis and eventually heart disease. And they have found that uh, the impaired glucose tolerance uh, measured with the glucose tolerance test has been actually been found to be more predictive of uh, cardiovascular survival and cardiovascular risk than just the fasting uh, blood sugar levels. The risk for cardiovascular death increases threefold as two-hour post-challenge glucose levels increase from 54 to 199 milligrams per deciliter, although these readings are all in the non-diabetic range. They've also found that the postprandial hyperglycemia after the oral glucose tolerance test is uh, predictive of uh, coronary progression. So if your uh, two-hour glucose levels after taking the oral glucose tolerance test is below 87 milligrams per deciliter, which is very good, then uh, you actually have coronary regression. But as you can see, the step-by-step -step increase in the postprandial glucose levels after two hours of the test, then uh, there is coronary progression in a linear manner. So uh, compared to 87 to 106 milligrams per deciliter after two hours, which is still pretty normal, like most people will probably fit into this category who don't have diabetes, then compared to 124 to 140 milliliters, milligrams per deciliter, then it's a significant uh, progression in coronary atherosclerosis. The risk for cardiovascular disease is 58% higher in the 140 milligram per deciliter group compared to the 87 milligram per deciliter group. Prediabetes and diabetes are diagnosed when your plasma glucose is over 140 milligrams per deciliter and 200 milligrams per deciliter respectively. Two hours after taking the oral glucose tolerance test, which involves consuming a drink that contains 75 grams of glucose. And the postprandial glucose is a stronger predictor of cardiovascular events than just the fasting glucose in type 2 diabetes. So if you were to take the oral glucose tolerance test, which involves consuming the 75 grams of glucose in a drink and measure your blood sugar levels two hours, and if your blood sugar levels are over 140 milligrams per deciliter, then that's a sign that first of all, you have impaired glucose tolerance, you're at a risk of uh, diabetes, and at the same time, you are also contributing to atherosclerosis progression and increasing the risk of uh, heart disease. If you're a healthy and fit individual with adequate insulin sensitivity and good glucose tolerance, then uh, you shouldn't stay that high after two hours. Normally, you would want to stay around 100 milligrams per deciliter, which is still considered quite Quite normal. In the real world, most people are eating a combination of different foods, and of course, they might get to like 75 or even 150 grams of carbs or glucose from their food, but they rarely directly get it 
from a drink. Even if you're drinking like Coke or soda or juices, then you're not going to directly consume 75 grams of glucose immediately. You would probably maybe consume it over the course of you know, an hour or maybe less, but you wouldn't consume it immediately as if you would take the test. From a perspective of longevity, then diabetes and heart disease are definitely something that you don't want to get and you want to reduce the risk of those conditions as much as possible. But the prolonged hyperglycemia can also have a direct negative effect on the aesthetic side of anti-aging. Chronically elevated blood sugar levels do contribute to the development of wrinkles by degrading the collagen in the skin. So it doesn't matter the case, it's worthwhile to make sure you don't have prolonged hyperglycemia as well as hyperlipidemia after eating for many hours. So here are the things you can do to prevent the prolonged hyperglycemia. Vinegar such as white vinegar and apple cider vinegar significantly reduce postprandial glycemia and insulin thanks to the acetic acid. Consuming apple cider vinegar with a bagel and juice can lower the 60 minute glucose response by 55%. Taking one to two tablespoons of white vinegar when eating white rice or white bread can reduce postprandial glucose by 25 to 35% and increase postmeal satiety twofold in healthy subjects. So vinegar is one of the best tools that you can add to your meals to uh, lower the postprandial glucose response. Many people like to add vinegar to the salad as salad dressing, which is great. But you can also mix like one glass of water with one to two tablespoons of uh, vinegar. The glycemic index, or much rather the glycemic load, is the biggest predictors of how high your blood sugar levels are going to rise after eating. The high glycemic foods have little to no fiber and they contain a lot of glucose and sugar, whereas the low glycemic foods have more fiber and little to no sugar. But the glycemic load is much more important than the glycemic index because you're never eating like just white potatoes or just white bread. You're eating those, those foods together with the other foods, which creates the glycemic load of the entire meal. So even if you're eating like white bread, make sure you have some other foods there that help to lower the blood sugar response, such as protein and fiber. Protein and fiber lower the glucose response and they can lower the postprandial glucose rise as well. So if you're eating carbs, then you can just add some of the fiber and protein, maybe like olive oil, as well as the apple cider vinegar to create the salad dressing. And uh, the blood sugar response to that meal would be significantly lower than you eating uh, just white bread or white potatoes without the vinegar, without the olive oil and without the fiber. Exercising either before or after eating within two hours of a meal has shown to lower postprandial glucose and triglycerides by 50%. Instead of sitting on a couch after a meal, you want to go for a short walk to lower the blood sugar response. You can also add different kinds of herbs and spices to your meal like cinnamon, turmeric, ginger and even cayenne pepper. Those can also have a positive effect in lowering the postprandial glucose response. So the best scenario is that before you eat, even if it doesn't have carbohydrates, is that you want to move a little bit and then eat the meal with some things that lower the glycemic load, such as vinegar, olive oil, and some other fiber and protein in the meal. Then after the meal, you can go for a walk to lower the blood sugar response and help with the digestion. If you want to learn more about optimizing your blood sugar levels and insulin sensitivity, then check out my new book with Dr. James De Nicola Antonio called The Blood Sugar Fix. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.